The second part of biotech is on biotechnology and agriculture. As we mentioned before in class, there are certain technologies that specifically apply to agriculture, and there are others that kind of apply to agriculture and medicine. Uh, the first technology we're going to talk about are GMOs. Uh, it's pretty important to know what this acronym stands for, and GMO stands for genetically modified organisms. So genetically modified organisms is one of those topics, like uh, stem cells was that we talked about yesterday, that's very controversial. And there is a lot of false information flying around. So I want to make sure you guys are getting the true science behind what a GMO is. Right, the way a GMO works is that the gene of interest, so like we talked about previously, the gene of interest would be whatever segment of DNA codes for whatever trait or protein that we're um, interested in. The gene of interest from one plant is inserted into a different plant is inserted into a different plant species. So the reason that we're inserting this gene of interest from one plant to a different plant species is to introduce a new helpful trait to introduce a new helpful trait. So some plants naturally have certain genes that help them to survive in certain environments and have certain traits that are beneficial. Uh, other plants don't have that. So what uh, scientists can do is they can isolate specific gene plant that are very maybe helpful for seedless, making them grow faster, resistant to a frost. The reason is crops with a wider variety of trees. Crops with a wider variety of traits. So able to take one organism and to help have a particular. Uh, some really good examples of when this is used. Uh, one example is the seedless watermelon. Seedless watermelon or even seedless um, oranges, those could possibly be genetically modified. So they've taken the trait from a different plant that doesn't naturally have seeds in its fruit and inserted it into watermelon. Uh, seedless watermelon is uh, more valuable to consumers. A consumer would rather buy a watermelon without seeds than one with seeds. So farmers find that they are able to sell more watermelons and therefore make more money. So that was beneficial for them. Um, another really interesting example is one called golden rice. And golden rice is a GMO project that's been going on for a long time. Um, as you may know, rice is grown uh, in the eastern part of the world. Uh, it's one of the primary sources of food in Asia and Africa. Um, but rice itself doesn't have a whole lot of nutrition. And in parts of Asia and Africa, there's a high rate of malnutrition or being undernourished and not getting enough vitamins and minerals. So what scientists have decided to study is to see if they could modify rice to provide more nutrients to those people since rice was such a big part of their diet. So golden rice, the reason it's called golden is because they actually inserted a gene for the rice to create uh, what's called beta carotene. Beta carotene is a vitamin that's in things like carrots that gives them that orange or golden color. Uh, beta carotene, beta carotene, sorry, is um, used by your body to produce vitamin A, which is one of those essential, in, uh, essential vitamins that not uh, everyone gets enough of, especially if you're malnourished. So golden rice was really an opportunity to take a not very nutritious food and make it more nutritious so that it was more valuable to grow and eat in areas where rice was really popular. All right, once you have these notes written down in your notebook on page 10, 
I want you to stop this recording and watch the second video listed on this page all about GMOs and debunking some of the myths and it's going to go through some of the pros and cons for why GMOs may be good or bad.